Would you take the Word of God with me, please? And uh, let's find the Gospel according to Matthew. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 18. Let's find Matthew, chapter number 18. And uh, we come here to another parable of Christ that He gives, teaching us timeless truth and principle. And we'll find Matthew chapter number 18. We'll begin reading in verse 21. If you'll stand with me, please. We'll read God's Word together. Matthew chapter 18. Begin reading in verse 21. Matthew chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. As we come now, continuing in our series on the family, I would like to speak to you this afternoon on the necessity of forgiveness. The necessity of forgiveness. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now. We know that we're utterly unable and incapable of doing what needs to be done without your power and strength. We trust and believe that you'll be among us and work among us. I pray you forgive us where we failed you in our words and our actions and our thoughts. Forgive us, Lord. And I pray now that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray you would take this vessel of clay that every word that proceeds out of this mouth would be thus saith the Lord. Would not be the words of man, but the words of God. May you speak to our hearts. Help us to take a hold of the truth that you want to give to us today. We love you and we thank you for your love and mercy and forgiveness. Help us now to learn these things that you have for us. And we'll praise you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Here we have how the Lord Jesus, of course, is is teaching. And in chapter number 18, we find that he talks about the ninety and nine. The ninety and nine and the one who goes astray. And how he goes after and he follows after that one to find him. We praise God for that. And then he speaks about if your brother sins against you and does something against you, then this is the way in which it is to be dealt with. He actually gives us there the process. In chapter 18, we didn't read that part. He says to take that to him alone, take another if necessary, go beyond that to the church if if that is not heeded and so on. But he says, this is the way you're supposed to deal with these things. And he tells us, as we come there to chapter 18, 
In verse 18, I want you to see this verse because I think it's a good backdrop for what the Lord would want to say to us from this passage. Verse 18 says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to let that sink in. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he goes on to say that if two of you shall agree of anything that is to be done, he said, I'll do it. I'll do it of my Father which is in heaven. And he gives us the blessed promise, in verse 20, that we love, that he says, where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. It's a wonderful principle, a wonderful promise. But then on the heels of this, Peter comes to Christ. And we know Peter had a lot of things to say, didn't he? He had a lot of things to say. And many times they were in the, in the form of an interrogative statement. He was asking questions. Lord, I know you said this, but let me ask you something. How often will my brother sin against me and I continue to forgive him or her? Till seven times? How often do I have to bear this? How often will this person continue to sin against me, continue to say things and do things that are hurtful, and... They continue to say sorry, or maybe they don't, and I continue to forgive them. How many times will this happen? And Peter says, Lord, seven times in a day? Seven times? And the Lord says, no, my friend. Don't expect that. Not seven times, but 70 times seven. It's a large number. A number that we would never actually attain to number we would never find necessary to do. But at the same time, we think how we ask for the Lord's forgiveness, and all of us combined is a lot more than that. A lot more than that. But Jesus says, no, not till seven times, and don't be counting it, not till seven times, but he says, till 70 times seven. In other words, don't ever stop. No matter how many times that person comes to you and asks and pleads for forgiveness, he said, don't ever stop forgiving. And so then the Lord gives a parable. The Lord gives a parable, and as he often did, an answer to questions. People would ask him something, and he would say, well, the kingdom of heaven is like this or that. And he would take a parable and use it to explain the truth that he was trying to get across. In this parable, we have a man who has servants who he's reckoning with to see what they owe him. I want you to know some basic principles. Would you write this down, please? The necessity of forgiveness. Number one, we see the servant's debt. We see the servant's debt. Notice what the Bible says here, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. So he's taking account of those who are his own. Those who are his servants. And when he begins to reckon, as we in the South say, as he begins to reckon, we say, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. But down there we say, I reckon. We say, are you, are you, how are you doing? Are you doing well? I reckon. And he reckons with his servants. And that means to take account. Reckon means to add it up. And figure out what is lacking. And these servants come to him. Perhaps they all owed something. But the one servant comes to him, or rather is brought to him, who owes 10,000 talents. Now, in order for us to get our mind wrapped around such a number, the talent was the greatest, the, the highest, largest measurement that was being used at the time. 
a large thing which would be equal to, to thousands and thousands of, of dollars for us. 10,000 talents, he says. This is how much that servant owed his master. And we'll just say it in the plainest language we can think of. It was a great debt. It was a great debt. It was a very large debt. So first of all, we see the debt of the servant. This is a great debt, a great debt that no doubt could never be paid. Could never be paid. In fact, the debt was so great that the Lord said, you will be sold and your wife and your children and all that you have in order that this debt can be paid. This is a debt that can't be paid. It's a debt that he couldn't work off. It was a debt that he could not pay off. The Bible says he had not to pay. He didn't have... It's not like the debt that you and I incur in our bank accounts. It's thousands of dollars. It's nothing like that. This was a debt that could not be paid. And let me bring it to you this way, dear friends, that you and I had a debt that we could never pay. We had a debt of sin before we came to Christ. We had a debt of sin that could never be paid. No matter how hard we tried, no matter how many good works we did, no matter how many festivals of atonement we tried to invent, there was no way that we could ever pay that debt on our own. I want to say as a side note to this, as you read that verse, and it says that he was to be sold, his wife and children, all that he had in payment to be made, you know what that brings to my mind? That sin always costs a great deal. Sin costs a great deal. This debt that the man had to pay was going to cost him his family, was going to cost him his marriage, was going to cost him the relationship with all of his children. It was going to cost him everything that he had. And I want to tell you something today, young people, older people, and anybody in between, that sin will always incur a great cost and a great debt. When we sin, we'll find that there's consequences. We'll find that the cost is great. That families are lost over it. And then when we don't understand this basic principle, we'll lose our own families. And the the principle and the necessity of what we're talking about today, if it's not there, then the families can be lost. This man had a great debt, and that debt, he could not pay it, and he tried to pay it, but he couldn't pay it. It ended up costing him his wife and his children, and that is what sin does. Sin will take you further than you want to go, always make you pay more than you ever intended to pay, ever wanted to pay. Sin will always take you down that road. Will always take you. If you don't believe me, just ask one of these dear ones in the auditorium today, myself included, and ask where sin leads. And you'll find that sin always costs. Always costs. So we see the servant's debt. The Bible says that he was to be sold. Everything he had and payment to be made. And this servant comes to the Lord and he gets upon his knees and he says, Lord... Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all the debt. In other words, she's begging, can you give me another chance? Can you have compassion on me? He comes to the Lord. Will you forgive my debt? Will you forgive my debt? You know, I love the song that says, I hear my Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, because Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. 
He paid the debt. He paid the debt. And here, there's a debt that cannot be paid. And my goal today is for all of us to put ourselves into this parable and say, I'm the servant. I'm the servant who had a debt that could never be paid. I'm the servant whose wife and children and house should have been sold so that payment could be made. I'm the one who should have been behind bars. I'm the one who sinned a great deal and it cost me a great amount. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He paid my debt. He paid my debt. So notice, first of all, the servant's debt. But then secondly, if you will, please, notice the Lord's compassion. The Lord's compassion. As we've touched on this, verse number 27. The servant has come to him and said, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Now, let me ask you something. Are you thankful that one day when you came to Christ and you bowed on your knees to the Lord, or you came to Him and you asked Him, Lord, will you save my soul? Aren't you glad He had compassion on you? Yeah. Aren't you glad that He didn't say, no, you ought to be sold and your family and your wife and your children and everything must be taken away and you need to spend eternity in hell because of your sin. But instead, He had compassion when we asked Him for salvation. The Lord's compassion. The Lord's compassion. He said, yes, I will forgive you the debt. Now, keep in mind, please bear in mind, as we follow this thought, that this was a great debt. And by the way, when a person comes to Christ, when a person comes to Christ, I came to Christ when I was a young boy, seven years old. Some of you came to Christ as young, some of you came to Christ older, some of you in different ways, at different times in your life. But let me tell you, there's something in common that we all had. There's no difference between me and you. There's no difference between me and you. Because we all had a debt that we could not pay. It's impossible. We couldn't pay it. And the Lord had compassion. And he said, I'll forgive you. You come to me in faith, for repenting of your sin, I'll forgive you. The Lord's compassion. He says, I'll forgive you the debt. Very large amount. Very large amount. Notice number three. Here's where we get to the point. Not only do we see here the servant's debt and the Lord's compassion, but thirdly, we see the servant's unforgiveness. The servant's unforgiveness. Did you note that, please? Servant's debt, Lord's compassion. Now they have the servant's unforgiveness. Notice what the Bible says, verse 28. But the same servant. The same one who had just stood before his master and had been forgiven all his debt. The same one who had a debt that he could not pay. The same one who owed a great deal, and God had compassion on him and forgave him. The same servant, the Bible says. The same servant. What did he do? He went out and found one of his fellow servants, so the same stature, the same level, the same status as him, who also had a debt that couldn't be paid, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him. Now we're not talking about what he owed the Lord anymore. Now we're talking about what he owed the other servant, the fellow servant. He owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. Don't worry, I won't do it. He took him by the throat. And he said, pay me that thou owest. Pay it to me. I want you to understand something. Let's put this in perspective. That servant who had just been forgiven 
an enormous, a large, a great, an unfathomable, unfathomable debt, and he was just forgiven the whole thing, he went to his fellow servant who owed him 100 pence. And let me explain something to you. A pence, uh, the pence, is the smallest of the Roman coins. The smallest of it all. Talents the largest. 10,000 of that. His fellow servant owed him 100 pence. And it said that the pence maybe was like 10 pennies. Six, some say maybe 60 or whatever. Like less than a dollar, okay? Less than a dollar. And 10 of those, less than $10, okay? See the size comparison. The servant had this huge debt that could never be paid. Then his fellow servant had a small debt that was only like $10, let's just say $10 so we understand it. I don't know if that's the exact number, but please, just, let's just say $10. Very small, very small amount. And he comes and holds him by the throat, and he says, pay me that thou owest. Verse 29, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet. He did the same thing that the fellow servant had just recently done. But now it's being done to him. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. All he really had to do was go mow a lawn. He would have it. Very small. Very small. But the Bible says in verse 30, and he would not. He would have none of it. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. We see the servant's unforgiveness here. That he had forgotten that he was just forgiven an infinite debt that he could never pay. And his fellow servant, his fellow servant had 100 pence, just a few dollars. And he said, no, I will not have compassion. I will not forgive. Even though I've been forgiven, I will not forgive you for this little thing. I will not forgive you. Do you get the point? Christ forgave it every, everything. The huge debt that we could never pay, that we couldn't even quantify, He forgave it all. But then the parable is, then we go to a fellow servant who has done a very small thing to us, very insignificant in relation to what we have been forgiven. And we say, no, I'm not going to have compassion. You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay for what you did. And when he talks about putting in prison, let me just say something to you. That unforgiveness is like a prison. It's like the bars of a prison. Unforgiveness enslaves people and puts them in bondage. And by the way, that's not just the person that you're refusing to forgive. It's you also. When you refuse to forgive, when you refuse to forgive the hundred pence, the very small thing that someone has done, which is nothing, very insignificant in relation to what we've been forgiven by Christ, and you refuse to forgive that little thing, you don't want to forgive it? That enslaves both you and them. Bitterness, my dear friends, is like a cancer. Unforgiveness is like a cancer. It's like something that eats inside and out. And the servant refused. He refused to forgive. And then the Bible says in verse 31, and when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. They saw this happen. Now you and I can imagine, we can imagine if, we owed some great debt of money to someone, were forgiven, and then went and couldn't get over $10 worth, how other people would look at that and say, what's wrong with that guy? Why can't he forgive that small thing? But they go and they tell their, their Lord. And uh, the Bible says, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord, told unto their Lord all that was done. 
Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. And by the way, when Christ forgave, he forgives all. He didn't forgive some, but he forgave all. He said, I forgave all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? The Lord said, look, I've forgiven you all this debt. Could you not have compassion like I did to you? You know, we presume on the Lord sometimes. We know that we're forgiven. And you know what we do? We ask the Lord to forgive us daily. We ask the Lord to forgive us of our sin. And then we don't forgive someone else. We presume that the Lord is going to forgive us when we're refusing. We are presuming upon Him. That he has forgiven us this great debt and we are not forgiving someone else. This servant refused to forgive. But the master said, should you not have remembered what I did? Take your Bible if you will please. I want you to see these verses that you know. But please see them again in this context. If you'll keep your finger there and turn over to Ephesians. So turn over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 4. Please notice this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. The Bible says in verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32, and be ye kind one to another. What's involved in this kindness? Tender-hearted, that means compassion. Forgiving one another. How are we going to do this? Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now sometimes you say, I can't do it. I can't forgive this person. You have no idea what they did. I can't do it. You can do it for Christ's sake. You can do it for Christ's sake. Remembering how He forgave you. And realize the Lord has forgiven me greater things than this person did to me. He's forgiven a greater debt. This person might have owed me something, but it's very insignificant. It's nothing compared to what I owed the Lord. And He forgave me. Listen, if you can't forgive a person, you find it hard to do that, then do it for Christ's sake. Do it for Christ's sake, because He forgave you. Turn over to Colossians, if you will, please. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Two books over. Colossians 3, verse 12. Put on therefore the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and longsuffering. Forbearing, verse 13, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Notice these words. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. He said, if any man have a quarrel against any. Now what's a quarrel? A quarrel is an argument, it's a, something, it's a tiff, it's something we have against somebody, something that's happened, some, someone's done to us, and we think it in our head, if I could, I would say this. I would set it straight. I would tell them what they really did to me. That's a quarrel. We have it in our mind, we say, you know, they just don't have any idea what they did. And this is what I would say. I would say this and this and this. He said, if any man have a quarrel against any. Now, I want you to think for a moment. The word any, does that exclude anybody? If any man have a quarrel against any, does that exclude anybody? 
He said there's no person that you could actually say, I don't have reason to forgive them. That's amazing when we think about that. It doesn't matter what it is. There's not a person, especially a believer in Christ, someone who knows the Lord, there's nothing that person could do or say that we could not and should not forgive them for. Because it's all on the basis, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. We do to others as Christ. See, Christ set the example. Dear friends, I'm just glad that the Lord forgave me. Aren't you glad? We could just talk about that for a while. We could preach all day on that. How Christ forgave us for all the things that we've done. I'm thankful for it. I rejoice in that. But anything else that's done to us is small, it's insignificant. I'm not minimizing problems in relationships and marriage and family. I'm not minimizing that and saying it's not worth dealing with. But forgiveness is always the right thing. Forgiveness is always the way to deal with it. Because even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. If you can convince me that there's some sin Christ didn't forgive you for, then you can convince me that you don't have to forgive someone else. But we know He's forgiven us. We know He's forgiven us all things. We know that His forgiveness was bestowed abundantly. And he didn't leave anything out. We must also forgive others. If you return to our passage there in Matthew chapter 18, we see the servant's debt and how great that was. 10,000 talents. We see the Lord's compassion. We see the servant's unforgiveness for this very small amount. And the Lord says, should you not forgive and have compassion as I compassion on you? Verse 34, and his, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. You say, can you explain that to me? I want to explain it to you this way. That unforgiveness, the punishment we get for that, the punishment we get for that is that unforgiveness will torment you. It will be a torment to you and to others. When we refuse to forgive, we find, you know, we're really just hurting ourselves. Really hurting ourselves. He says, this is going to end up being a torment. It's going to be a torment to that person. And then verse 35, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. It's a very important caveat, if you will. He says, not just forgive them. You, know, you can say that. You can say, I forgive, or I have forgiven, but he says, from the heart. True forgiveness is in the heart. True forgiveness is not something that we just feign it and speak about it and say it, but forgiveness is in the heart. And he said, when you're not forgiving from the heart, it's still going to torment you. That unforgiveness is still going to be a torment to you if it's not taken care of at that heart level. He says, if you don't forgive everyone, his brother, their trespasses. You know what we're speaking about? We see, obviously, brothers and sisters in a physical family. This is why we come to this. We're speaking about the family because this is so necessary and essential for the family. The brothers and sisters in the family and husbands and wives must forgive one another must forgive one another. But then we go beyond that to see that a brother or sister in Christ has no reason not to forgive others. We are to forgive everyone his brother their trespasses. You know, the Lord said himself, it is impossible but that offenses should come. Truth of the matter is, there's always going to be offenses. There's always going to be 
hurtful things that at some point are said and done. But we see the servant's debt, which was great, unpayable. The Lord's compassion that he bestowed on that servant so graciously. Then that servant, that same servant, he turns around. He's unforgiving to his servant. And then number four was this, the servant's punishment. And the servant's punishment is the torment that comes from that. And let me just tell you that if we refuse to forgive, then we'll find we're not just going to get by with it. But people who live years and years in unforgiveness, you know, the tragic thing is that some live their whole lives in unforgiveness, in bitterness. Their whole lives they live in that. And it's just going to torment them more and more and more as time goes on. Those people become bitter people. Those people become hateful people. Those people become very unkind people when they have that torment of unforgiveness in their heart. It's one of those things that we need to deal with immediately and bestow forgiveness as quickly as possible. And the basis for everything we do is that mass debt that was paid. If you know Christ is your Savior, there's a massive debt that's been paid by Christ. He paid it all. And because of that, we have no reason not to forgive others. And this, truly no reason, truly no reason. It's not just words that we say, but there is no reason not to forgive another person. And this is absolutely essential for the family because the truth of the matter is, I believe that many of the problems that families face, marriages and families, and with one another, the problems they're face, facing, is because one of them just had to get even. And one of them just said, I'm not going to let it go. It's going to have to be even. They did this, I did there. It got to get even. And, but I'm glad huh, the Lord didn't try to get even with me. Because if he had, I would be spending eternity paying that sin debt. But he forgave. We must forgive. It's a necessity. The necessity of forgiveness. Let's bow in prayer together, may we?